Hi everyone! Today let's have a quick tip for Photoshop. Have you ever used shadows and highlights before? This image could be boosted quite a bit just using one tool. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Right off the bat, this image looks like it would be a great one to use with this tool because it is so backlit and so underlit. So while we have great details in the background here with our hills and sky and stuff, um, our figure here in the foreground is almost completely shadowed out. So to use this tool, go up to Image, Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights. Right off the bat, the tool automatically does a bunch of shifts for you. Mine is completely extended here. Some of you might go into this tool for the first time and need to ask for more options somewhere around here. And if you click that button, you should see what I see here. So yeah, like I said right off the bat, this tool automatically makes a bunch of shifts that it thinks will work. In a way, this tool is kind of doing an HDR effect by looking at the background, saying, yes, we want to leave as much detail here as possible, and then looking at our foreground subject and saying, well, we need to bring in as much detail as possible there as well. This doesn't necessarily mean that this is as much detail as you want on your subject. So I'm going to make some adjustments to it. Up here under shadows, we have amount, which is the overall amount of these two effects on the image. Then we have tone and we have radius. So I'm going to take my radius bar and move it over here because I think that this creates a more natural lighting on the subject. So if you go back this way again and move over here, the sunlight hitting the face on this side ends up looking a lot more natural with radius pushed more to this edge. With tone, this can kind of be however much overall light you want to bring onto your subject. You can bring a lot or a little. Let's leave it about here. And with the amount, as you can see, the more we raise this up, the more lighting we're having on this subject. But I it looks a lot more unnatural and um, you could use this and then go in with some other color editing tools and then kind of re-edit the color of the face here because as you can see there's not much color detail going on in the face. For this I'm going to go ahead and leave it here because that looks a little bit better to me for the time being. On highlights what you're affecting is your bright areas. So obviously in this image you're looking at your sky and your hills out here in the background that are kind of fading in and out. So you can use your highlights to bring these details back in. Now with this image we are not really suffering much with the highlights because we started out with this detail already here. What we were suffering from was having a lot of lack of detail on the foreground of this image or our subject. So I'm just going to pull it in just a tad. I really don't want to push it because as you saw we have some whites over here that are still overexposed. But then you can also affect these. Maybe bring in the mid-tones. This area of your hills. And your radius. Which doesn't do as much with highlights unless you really push it. Which most cameras honestly probably won't allow for right now. After you mess with your shadows and your highlights in this tool, you can go to your adjustments and you can add extra coloration in if you like. Now the problem with adding extra coloration in maybe with this image is there's just not much color detail up here on this part and you're going to want to spend a lot more time working on adjusting the amount of color on the cheeks and the side of the neck as well as this area. So you're going to want to for this particular image, I won't push it too much with the color, but if you have an image that has an overall lack of saturation, this can be great. Midtones affects essentially the sharpness of your image um, and its contrast. So as you see, if I raise this up, it gets a lot more contrasted and a lot more sharp and grainy. Um, but it's not exactly something I'm going to go for since this is the only tool I'm going to be using for this edit. 
So I'm going to go ahead and leave it right about there. But this has already made a bunch of great change to our image considering how little we started with here. If we go ahead and press the preview button, this is what our image started as. As you can see, again, we didn't have a lot of detail on the subject and it just kind of made this image feel a little useless to me. So this tool can really bring in and save a lot of details that would otherwise be lost to your darks or your lights, depending on how good your camera handles that stuff. So I hope this is helpful, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.